What is the vertex connectivity of the Peterson graph? Remember that vertex connectivity of a graph is typically denoted lowercase kappa of the graph, like kappa of G. We'll write kappa of P to denote the vertex connectivity of the Peterson graph. This is a very well-known graph for a number of reasons. If you're not familiar with it, notice it's pretty nice structure. It consists of an internal five cycle, often drawn as a star, and an outer five cycle, often drawn as a pentagon. Each vertex of the outer cycle is joined to a vertex of the inner cycle. So what is the vertex connectivity of this neat graph? Well, I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson introducing vertex connectivity. Remember that it's the minimum number of vertices we need to delete from a graph in order to disconnect it. So for example, a cycle graph with at least four vertices, roughly speaking, looks something like that. In order to disconnect a cycle graph, we need to delete one vertex, which turns it into a path graph, and then we need to delete a second vertex that is on the interior of the path, and that will disconnect the cycle. That's the minimum number of vertices we can delete to disconnect a cycle graph with at least four vertices and so the vertex connectivity of such graphs is equal to two. I think it will help the explanation to say here at the start that the vertex connectivity of the Peterson graph is three. So how do we verify that fact? How could we determine ourselves that the vertex connectivity of this graph is three? Showing that the vertex connectivity of a graph equals a certain number basically takes two steps. First, for this example, we'll show that the vertex connectivity of the Peterson graph is less than or equal to three. This just means that the graph can be disconnected by deleting three vertices. We can't disconnect the graph by deleting just any three vertices, as we see there, but we can disconnect it if we delete the right three vertices, as we see here. And I'll just do that one more time we see that we can disconnect the Peterson graph by deleting three vertices. So indeed, the vertex connectivity of the Peterson graph is less than or equal to three. We know that three is enough, but is three the minimum? Well, to show that three is the minimum, we of course need to show that the vertex connectivity is greater than or equal to three as well, as in it's necessary to delete at least three vertices to disconnect the graph. This of course establishes that the vertex connectivity of the Peterson graph is three. Again, less than or equal to three means that deleting three vertices is enough, and greater than or equal to three means that three vertices is necessary. So it's both necessary and sufficient. It is the vertex connectivity. I'll explain why the vertex connectivity of the Peterson graph is greater than or equal to three in two ways. This first way I think is a little less detail oriented, but I do think is a simpler explanation that is pretty convincing. For starters, we note that the Peterson graph is connected, which means in order to disconnect connect it, we will have to delete some vertices. That immediately means that the vertex connectivity of the Peterson graph is greater than zero, which means that it's greater than or equal to one. And remember, we want to show that it's greater than or equal to three. So we still have to bump this lower bound up a little bit. Thankfully, the Peterson graph doesn't have that many vertices. So we can easily show that its connectivity actually has to be greater than one by observing what happens when we delete each of its vertices. If we take a minute to go through all 10 vertices, we see that deleting any one of them does not disconnect the Peterson graph. And so the vertex connectivity has to be greater than one. Since the vertex connectivity has to be greater than one, that of course means that the vertex connectivity is greater than or equal to two. So now we want to show that two vertices is not enough to disconnect the graph either. Think of it like this. There are three ways that we could delete two vertices from the Peterson graph. We could delete two vertices from the inner five cycle, but if we do that, the outer cycle will certainly still be connected since we didn't touch that. And from the outer cycle, we could travel to the remaining inner vertices. So that would not disconnect the graph. Alternatively, we could delete two vertices from the outer cycle, but the same logic would apply here. 
We haven't disconnected the inner five cycle since we didn't touch it, and from the inner five cycle, we could still travel to the remaining outer vertices. So that's not gonna be able to disconnect the graph either. The only other possibility is that we delete a vertex from the outer cycle and a vertex from the inner cycle. However, as we previously mentioned, for a cycle that has at least four vertices, we need to delete at least two vertices to disconnect it. So when we only delete one vertex from the inner cycle and one vertex from the outer cycle, what remains of the inner cycle will still be connected, and what remains of the outer cycle will still be connected. And there will still be some edges joining what remains of the inner and outer cycles, so the graph will again still be connected. So no matter how we delete two vertices from the graph, it's not going to disconnect it. Thus, the vertex connectivity of the Peterson graph is greater than 2, which means that it's greater than or equal to 3. And so we showed that three vertices is sufficient to disconnect the Peterson graph, and we just went over demonstrating that three vertices is necessary to disconnect the Peterson graph. So the connectivity is three. Now here's another explanation that you may or may not prefer. Here we've got a labeled Peterson graph, and here we've got something that you can ignore for the time being. First, as we did originally, we would establish that the connectivity of the Peterson graph is less than or equal to three, because we know that deleting three vertices is enough to disconnect it. And again, we know the connectivity is at least one, because the graph is connected, so we will have to delete at least one vertex to disconnect connect it. But then, a very nice property that the Peterson graph has is that it is vertex transitive. Roughly speaking, this means that the Peterson graph looks the same locally from any single vertex. And one of the nice consequences of this vertex transitivity is that deleting any one vertex from the Peterson graph, believe it or not, leaves a graph with the exact same structure. So all these graphs you're seeing, as I just delete a single vertex, they're all isomorphic. Thus, when we delete one vertex from the Peterson graph and observe that it is still connected, that immediately tells us that we can't disconnect it by deleting any one vertex. And so the connectivity is greater than or equal to two. And since seeing is believing, let me just show you an example of how deleting the vertex two leaves behind the same graph as deleting the vertex eight. Clearly what we have over here, as it appears, is what we get when we delete the the vertex 8. But what you'll notice is that I've relabeled the vertices over here on the right so that it's actually the same graph as what we get over here when we delete 2. So these graphs are exactly the same. If you look closely, you would be able to verify that. Just for a little evidence, a little example, notice 1 is adjacent to 5 and 10, and look over here, 1 is adjacent to 5 and 10. So indeed, when we delete 2, what we get is isomorphic to what we get when we delete 8. And that's the same as what we have when we delete 7, which is the same as what we get when we delete 3, and so on. Since deleting one vertex always leaves behind the same graph, structurally speaking, we can just delete one vertex, say the vertex 1, and then in order to verify that the vertex connectivity of the Peterson graph is greater than or equal to 3, we can try deleting each of the vertices in this new graph that we're looking at. Deleting each one will verify that the graph remains connected, no matter which of these vertices we delete. And this verifies that deleting two vertices is not sufficient to disconnect the Peterson graph. Again, that's because deleting any one vertex leaves the same graph behind, structurally speaking, and then we observe that that remaining graph still can't be disconnected by deleting a single vertex. And so clearly deleting two vertices from the Peterson graph will not disconnect it. And so the vertex connectivity actually has to be greater than two, which of course means it's greater than or equal to three. And so again, we've verified that the vertex connectivity of the Peterson graph is equal to three. Prince.